Hello and welcome to Take Time. I'm your host Patrick Marlette and let's talk about buying watches. Today's episode is about buying vintage watches online, predominantly off eBay. Now the information I'm going to share with you today will mostly pertain to eBay, but the same is true for most web-based resources. If you wanted to buy from a forum, I would suggest you check out Watch Recon. It's an aggregated source for finding watch sales online. They have a really great search engine and the whole layout's really clean and easy to operate. Not a sponsor. Now I wanted to start this guide with an acronym you see quite often when you're looking to purchase a vintage watch, and that is NOS. NOS stands for New Old Stock, and all too commonly it refers to something that is definitely not NOS. In order for an item to be NOS, it has to have never been used. That is to say, the QC sticker's still on it, there's hang tags on it, box papers, usually those accoutrements will also come with the item, but you can visibly tell that the watch has never been worn. Or is constructed from OEM parts, that is, original equipment manufactured parts. That is to say, factory sealed, and again, never been used to construct the watch. Now I know this second description doesn't fall in line with a lot of collectors' philosophies as the items themselves weren't created in the original factories, but hear me out. More often than not, these recreations are as close as you'll get to the original sometimes, and secondly, it's very much to the definition of new old stock, at least in my book. Now the reason I bring this acronym up is because more often than not, I would say nine times out of ten, when you see a listing that says rare NOS, it's usually not a new old stock item. And the folks selling it to you are upcharging you for this distinction. So be extremely wary when you see a listing that says NOS or new old stock. I would advise you go to a site you trust with reference images and check the case lines. Make sure that all of the bits and pieces that come with the product are accurate to how it was originally packaged. And sometimes it's hard to secure that for something that's 30 or 40 plus years old, but there are sources out there with detailed pictures that can help you, depending on the watch in question. Now do not get overcharged for something that's new old stock and don't buy it unless you're 100% certain of its authenticity. Now to piggyback on what I was just talking about regarding new old stock, something that's been untouched, never worn, in my personal opinion, I value an item that looks like it's definitely been worn. It is almost always better to find the watch that is beaten, dirty, and definitely been worn. In all likelihood, that's the item you want, the one that doesn't look overtreated, because I bet you that one hasn't been polished, hasn't been rebrushed, or hasn't been doctored up to look brand new. Now this is not to say that you can't find a flawless example of a watch that's 40 plus years old. It's happened, it's happened to me, and it's fantastic when it does, but those listings are one in every 10,000th of a listing. Again, before you make the buy, I suggest you cite references of the model you have in question. And there's a group that I generally turn to for fine examples of timepieces, and that's Worn and Wound. They do great reviews on vintage watches often, and they take their own images of the samples they have in. And, and more often than not, their samples are very, very nice examples of the watch in question. I generally turn to their imagery to cite case lines of the watch I have uh, interest in. And of course, if there is a group that you guys trust, feel free to leave it down in the comments section below. I'm personally always looking for a new source to cite case lines from, I just find that Worn and Wound does a really great job of photo documenting all of their work. So far with our vintage hounding, we know that we don't necessarily want to look for the newest looking item. Maybe it doesn't have the best images. And one of the other things I'm going to proffer is that you guys search very broad. Now, I've found that the narrower I search for a particular item, the least likely I am to find it, or at least such is the case on eBay. And I mean, you'll, you'll find an example or two if you type in, you know, the full name with reference number of the watch you're looking for, but it's likely that the people selling it know exactly what they have too, and they're going to charge you a much higher sale rate than someone who doesn't. And I don't know about you guys, but when I'm buying a vintage watch, I mean, they already come with a lot of problems typically. I know I'm going to need to get it serviced at some point very soon. So I'm trying to spend under market value if I can, unless it's from a group that I find trustworthy or reliable, and I know that they've fixed it up with their mechanic. But if I'm going to hound down my own vintage pieces, I'm going to generally try to go for under market value. 
So say you want a Seiko 6138 8039 John Player Special. Maybe you should start with Seiko 6138. If you're really crazy, maybe you just search Seiko. My point being, you'll see a whole heck of a lot more listings this way, and not everyone is a savvy watch enthusiast, so when they're going to put up their listing, it's likely that they don't always know how to best describe it. This way, you can find those gem listings and hopefully pick up a good deal on a watch you've been looking for. Now the last thing I want to talk about is seller rating, and this is very particular to eBay shopping. Now I know a lot of people will swear off buying a watch online if the seller doesn't at least have a 100% approval rating. Now to me that's pretty absurd. A lot of the best finds I've made were with sellers that were in the high 80s or low 90s. And oftentimes I'll find a seller with zero feedback and a really great item. If you were going to buy from someone who doesn't have a 100% approval rating, there are two things I suggest you do. You need to contact them, check out their other listings, and verify the legitimacy of their offerings. You know, you shouldn't write off a great listing because of seller reviews. Secondly, there are a lot of bitter people out there who would leave a sour review on someone's account just to bring down their approval rating. With eBay, it's very easy to check someone's feedback to see where that seller might have went wrong. Personally, I try to contact the individual I'm buying from to see if they're responsive and reasonable, and more often than not, you know, there's another human being at the end of the line, and they generally are. If that person doesn't respond in a way you like, then of course step away, but if they're courteous and earnest about what they're selling, I think you're in good hands. So I actually just bought a, a new old stock, new old stock. Seiko Bellmatic, and I got it for around $240. Now, while it wasn't new old stock, I noticed the, the individual's rating was around like 96.7%, something crazy like that, and they own a thrift store out in Missouri. So I, I got to the little messenger board and I started talking to that person over on eBay, and they were very upfront about the item. They, they had no clue what they had. I think what they did was look at other listings for similar watches and put a title according to what they found and a price that they thought was fair. So I wound up spending around $240 for a great condition Seiko Bellmatic with the original bracelet, all the links, box, outer box, manual, and a guarantee card from 1975, I think is what model year mine is. I did not let that seller's feedback be a deterrent. He was very prompt with his responses and he was candid about not knowing too much about the watch which is great for me because I think I got a pretty good deal. Now, every vintage reseller buys this way. Trust me. And you know what? Maybe they do take it to a mechanic and get the watch running precisely as it should. But oftentimes, as they curate a collection for you, they're going to upcharge you maybe four to five times more. But if you want to curate your own collection of vintage pieces, I highly recommend you take to eBay or the forums and find these pieces yourself. It's really worth the extra effort if you're looking for a particular vintage watch to do the searching yourself. It's so much more rewarding when you have the piece on your wrist and you did all the groundwork and you spoke to the original owner and you found just what you were looking for. Now guys, those are just my suggestions. If you have a few more about how you can protect yourself while you're buying online and make a great purchase, feel free to share them in the comment section down below. Also guys, check out yard sales, thrift stores, estate sales, you know, these are ads in your local paper or even online these days. You can find local places where you can view items yourself. You know, back where I used to live in Virginia, there were a ton of antique stores that were just a driving distance away with great vintage offerings. And a lot of these people don't want to make, you know, astronomical loads of cash off you. They just want to make or break a little more than even. I know I'm personally going to start attending more estate sales. I'd like to find those listings, and I know you've seen those words pop up in a listing on eBay at least once or twice, and you know what's true? They probably did find those items at estate sales. So why not let that person be you? Guys, I'd love to hear about any vintage finds you found when you went out antiquing or any really great purchases you've made online in the comments down below. Let's start that conversation. And if you like this video, feel free to hit that like button. If you have any friends, forums, or groups that you feel would benefit off of this video, feel free to share it with them. Again, my name is Patrick Marlette, and thank you for the time.